check out this new repository I made called Quantum Native Solvers. It's more of a knowledge repository, but it outlines the various solver techniques that you can use to run on a quantum computer to create quantum simulation. And there are various examples, and there's one that I really like. It's called the LLG equation that is formed or systematically derived from Lindbladian dynamics. So Lindbladian, here, it's a, it's a general form of a master equation for open quantum systems. So if you click on these links, you can actually read the paper. So here's the paper. It's open access. It's pretty great. There you go. And then there's a mini lecture, and it talks about how to derive it so that it becomes sort of a quantum description, thereby transcending the classical description. This works for LLG. So we end up with an, a quantum LLG solver. And what does that look like? Basically, you are solving these differential equations here. And one of these equations is actually a quantum equation. So if it's a quantum equation, that means you can solve it either analytically to create some ideal result, or you can get some more realistic results and code it in Python, for example. So you can script this entire mathematical description in Python and then solve it. And then get some plots, get some heat maps, some curves, and then you will have started to, for, started to perform scientific computing on a quantum computer. There are different kinds of simulation techniques, and all of these techniques that are listed in this tree are mapped. They are tied to some rigorous mathematics. So if you want to search for, let's say, the references, there are up to 52 references I put on the repository. You can read into it. And then if we go back up, you can actually determine which one of these techniques is more ready for NISC, Near Intermediate Scale Quantum, or if it's more eligible for near-term computers, quantum computers, like, uh, let's say, quantum finite element methods. So it's like a quantum version of a finite, finite element method solver. And then there's the fault tolerance techniques. These techniques here are all eligible for fault tolerance. And then, if you were to look at a fault-tolerant heterogeneous architecture, what does it look like? Here's an example, a proposal that I have put together. You can read that. And then the very last section is which one of these solvers will actually work very well on a fault-tolerant heterogeneous system. There you go. All right. So that's all I have for today. Here's some examples. There's some papers. 